we had a coordination on file for Pottsville for two years. We've been operating on the frequency that we tested and didn't interfere with anybody, okay? That repeater has been up for two years with no complaints of interference. Why can't that repeater be coordinated by ARCC? If it's not interfering with anybody, we did all the legwork and it's up and running. That's a low profile repeater. There's no reason that we should have been sitting on that waiting list for two years. But what did ARCC do? ARCC, a low profile sitting for two years, ARCC turned around in one day, coordinated us for, for Pottsville, that's been on the waiting list for two, for two years, right? A Pottsville repeater, which is a low profile repeater. So it's a low profile repeater that sat on a waiting list for two years. Why would that be if it's a low profile repeater? They coordinate us for that. They threw another coordination at us for Bears Head, which I already coordinated and notified them twice via email that this was coordinated. I even sent emails to the surrounding coordinators twice saying I coordinated it. All I got back from them were vicious emails saying you can't be a coordinator. You don't have the authority to make yourself a coordinator. Well, who does have the authority to make anybody a coordinator? So what the ARCC did on June 6th, they gave us a coordination that was sitting two years for a low, prof, low profile repeater. They gave us a coordination for Bears Head that when I went up to Bears Head and tested it on that frequency that they gave us, I was receiving a, a repeater in New Jersey, half scale. So that, that frequency is no good to us. And what they did was they snuck in the Sarah's 955 coordination after I notified them two years ago, uh, two months prior. So now who decides? There is really nobody to decide nobody. it. There's nobody to decide it. Now, you know, I've spoke to representatives from ARCC, our regional representative, and when he talked to me on the phone, he told me, Frank, if I was running ARCC, you should have that frequency. They weren't coordinated. You applied for it. You should get that frequency first. They should have to apply for another frequency. But we know that Sarah has a tight bond with ARCC. All their other repeaters are coordinated. Why was this one never coordinated? Well, probably the, the, the history behind that is... But whatever the history was, it's really irrelevant. They were, they, they were three separate individual trustees of those repeaters until Andy, what, 10, 15 years ago? Well, Carl was... Carl was, was three, seven. Years. I can't and remember Carmen. the gentleman's name of 345 from St. Clair. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name now. Mm -hmm. And then Bob Green was 955. Yeah. So they were three separate owners, three separate trustees. And... Uh, Sometime maybe 15, 20 years ago, it was in our lifetime, right, Andy? Uh, where Bob Green said, I'm, I'm out of the amateur radio. And, and I think the gentleman from St. Clair passed away. We, we coordinated a lot of different fre frequencies, and 955 was one of them. But with the same thing they could say with ARCC, you get nothing back from them. All they wanted was $15 per repeat. When was it coordinated with ARCC? Huh? When was it coordinated? Back in the, it was tried to be coordinated. We'd send the send them in with their fifteen bucks in, and you get no response from them, you know. And because I know I did it when I was president of the Sarah. So you sent the application in, yeah, we, and it was never acted on. And nothing came back. Okay, so it's uncoordinated. Would, would deal with the NMRL with the repeater book. You get that repeater handbook, and it's about it's not worth the paper to print of that because half the repeaters you go to are either not in existence. Or things have changed, and I mean I know because I've traveled the country quite a bit, and I've tried to get into half the repeaters you go into that book. They're not in existence. All right. So Ralph, is there anything that I said that you disagree with? Mm -mm. Nothing. Okay. The only thing I was not aware of was that somebody could be could declare themselves a coordinator, coordinator and. The, the only thing the only thing that I question on that is there is a question on the tech test that says how are the coordinators selected by a vote of the people who are affected by that repeater now I have never seen a ballot right. for any of these so I haven't been, I've been disenfranchised 
Right, right. And there was a situation like this where Chris Imblay said exactly uh, what I, there was a, a, a problem in Wyoming where there was a coordinator and there was another coordinator in the same area and they were fighting who had the right to coordinate. And it came before the ARCC somehow, some way, and uh, they said there's really nothing they can do. Now, again, if, if you look at this situation and I notified ARCC that I coordinated this repeater, uh, and again, I started coordinating, not because I wanted to be a coordinator, because we, just like you and your club, got no response from ARCC. ARCC's website, their list of coordinations are outdated, they're incorrect, and they're terrible at what they do. Mm -hmm. So why should the amateur community of this side of Pennsylvania be hampered by the deficiencies of our club? The big, biggest problem is you and everybody in this county knows what 955 was. You decided to take that what was it? What was it? And you Andy? already know Sarah had it. What? But what it's was in, it? It's in, the, it's in the repeater book. I'm not it's in what repeater thing. book? You know, huh? What repeater book? Is it well, coordinated? It looks like you it's, there it is. Well, yeah, it's there, but it's not coordinated. coordinated. But I'm just saying that it was common knowledge that we were using. But we're getting off track right but now. But I mean, I'm not going to get in the middle of this argument. I understand. I feel that Sarah had it. They were moving it from where it was to where 345 is and 345 to where... Uh, nine five well, five. Well, let's not forget it was because it was interference. It was off the air but, for construction. Okay, right. But where three yeah. four five was coordinated yeah. for Pottsville, yeah. so. Sarah moved it two years. Yeah. Okay, and they didn't update their coordination. Yeah. So, so I, technically, when you I, move a coordinated repeater from its original coordinated location, it becomes uncoordinated. I, That's a three four five. That's not a question. I, but when the nine five five was located in Joliet all these years, it was never. Coordinated. Well, it was, had been tried to be coordinated. Well, yeah. tried and being coordinated are two different things. Okay. All right. Again, like I said, JD asked the question. I think Frank explained it very well as to where the situation is at the current time. So uh, obviously, we're not going to uh, be able to make any final rulings here with the. With and Ralph, we spoke on email. We spoke on email, and I expressed to you my issues. Not that the ARCC issues, because, you know, the ARCC, the main coordinator for ARCC holds a position with ARRL. Their lawyer also holds a very high-ranking position with ARRL. And I reached out to uh, our local ARCC section just for some guidance. And I said... You know, I have a big problem with these guys doing this to a, to a, a local amateur sanctioned ARRL club. I said, you know, it, it bothers me how they could sit on ARRL, but outside ARRL, they're attacking our club. Yeah. And and I, I get the point that it has nothing to do with AR, ARRL, but, you know, that's like having somebody who works in a daycare center outside of work abusing a child and saying, well, I didn't abuse them while I was working, so I can still work here. Well, yeah. let me throw so, one thing in here. That question in the test is in error, okay? Because it, the, the part 97 says, frequency coordinator, an entity recognized okay, in a local or regional area. You're in a local area by amateur operators whose stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations that recommends transmit and receive channels and associated operating and technical parameters for such stations in order to avoid or minimize potential interference. Is if there, you're recognized by the people here as being a... Well, not only here, but two other, two other repeater owners with multiple repeaters. And you know, it doesn't say in there there can only be one coordinator for an area. And like I said, I did not want to get into coordination business. I don't care if I don't get another application to be coordinate anybody else. But the ARCC, and I'll say it in public, they're terrible at what they do. They're closed-minded. They decided to ignore my emails and coordinate a repeater on top of what I did. Exactly 
imagine, imagine if another coordinate, imagine if I coordinated a frequency seven miles from an ARCC coordinated repeater. What would they think of me as a coordinator? They would say, you're crazy, you're nuts. Yet that's exactly what ARCC did. Okay. Is there and no other frequency pairs? Very hard on VHF. I know, they're difficult to get. At that site, at that site. And that site is the highest point. It's 2,200 feet above sea level. It's the highest point of any location in Schuylkill County. And, you know, we got a complaint from Bucktown that I repeated 38 miles away was causing interference to them because we were on the same frequency. They couldn't even provide us with a proof of any interference. They just said because they're so close that when one repeater transmits and the other repeater transmits, that the guys in the middle are causing interference. Yet, the same people coordinate a repeater seven miles away from another coordinated system. Just curious, what frequency is that? 146955. But didn't they also say, well, our repeater gets into school? If you look, and there's another one you can look up, 146270. That's never got into school. That's uh, that's that's okay. Yeah, let's drop it down. Yeah. All right, so uh, like Bill said, we're not going to answer. Solve the problem. Yeah, all this. Uh, yeah. that, does that? I mean, JD, does that give you a better insight as to you know, you asked the question? Yeah, I I don't know what information you're getting from the Sarasite. I understand. The, I I can understand the idea that we took a frequency that was being used by another club as uncoordinated. But again, this all stuff. You've been having problems with uh, ARCC too, right? But but our problem. So you took it upon yourself just to take a frequency that a local club was using to you to coordinate. Why didn't you take one from out in Allentown or? Down in the, up at Berwick. If, if your or club, like if what your club was coordinated you know? on that frequency, you know? I would have had no right well, to coordinate. You that. said yourself you were sitting two years waiting for coordination, and but well, that was a totally different site. That this is the frequency. That's right, because they weren't I acting mean, I on know anything. The ins and outs of it. Well, but I I'm do. Just saying, you took a frequency that you knew was being used by Sarah. Uncoordinated. You, I don't care. Uncoordinated. No, it, it, it's a big. It's a big. It's a Why big point. Why did you point. take it from another because club in the county to do it? Because there was no yeah. other uncoordinated frequencies yeah. in the area that would work. Yeah. That's. I think that was should yeah. be your answer, right, Frank? Yeah. That is. That is the correct answer. Yeah. We yeah. went up and down frequency pairs. We tried them, and the closest coordinated frequency to our repeater site on one four six nine five five is in Delaware. Now, I know the Sarah repeater is eight miles away, but they are uncoordinated and they're but fair that, game. But that's not what it'll be. It'll the, be the, the, the issue, the issue is, no, why did we choose an uncoordinated frequency? The answer is there are no other uncoordinated, there were no other uncoordinated frequencies that would not be impacted. Or that could be used. Yeah, maybe the FCC gets involved if somebody initiates a complaint to them. All right, let's move on. Yep, I know. Let's, yeah, right. There's nothing we're going to do about it, and I guess it'll be. I don't know that much about it, so I'm not going to get it. Right. So I know when I was president of that club, we did send in coordination stuff, never get anything back, and everything was fine. Tobacco was, didn't have a repeater. They had a pair of frequency. They had a, a repeater they had on the top of the uh, high rise. But uh, somewhere along the line, Al Brighter, nobody would put any money into it, and he just let it go. He didn't maintain the frequency or to, right. to repair and just let it go. And there was talk in Sarah at the time to take that frequency and, and, and put it into our bank. But at the, at the meeting, it was discussed that no, that would be more like pirating that frequency. If Tobacco wanted it, it's theirs. Let them do what they want with it. Let it go, keep it, or whatever. So it was decided it would be too much like you were trying to take Tobacco's frequency away. And it was was voted down. Right. So anyway, that's okay. all right. Uh, 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 Tim, uh, uh, anything new on the website or calendar? No, just uh, updating the uh, bylaws and um, change the dates for the meetings, that kind of stuff. Just standard updates. Okay, very good. Thank you. Old business. Uh, the update on the Hawk Mount, which we discussed earlier during the VE session, uh, it looks like that's off, unless something surfaces in the next right. week or two. Yeah. That, uh,